Welcome to this episode of Real Chemistry. I am still Dr. Morris. And today we're going to be talking about electron geometry, which is basically thinking about how electrons are oriented around our molecules in space. Right? When we draw Lewis structures, they're always two-dimensional. They're trapped on the surface of our paper. But in fact, right, real molecules exist in three-dimensional space, and actually they don't always exist on a flat plane. Right? And so what we do with electron geometry is we look at how the electrons are oriented around a central atom in a molecule. We can get some idea of what that looks like from this diagram down below of CH4. This guy is called methane. And the notation that this is written in is called line-wedge notation. And it's a way to explain what the hydrogen atoms are actually doing. You might think, oh, they're all lying flat, but they're not. These ones with the normal line are flat. They're in the plane. They're on the surface of the page. When I draw dashed lines like that, that means it's going backwards. So that one's going into the page. On the other hand, when I draw this dash, that's coming out of the page. So this explains that one of the hydrogens coming out of the page, one of the hydrogens going into the page, and two of the hydrogens are trapped in that plane. So that gives you some idea of what we're talking about here, how the electrons, or the bonds in this case, are oriented around the central atom. And we're going to look at a bunch of different molecules that have different numbers of electrons around them and talk about what shape that gives their electron geometry. Now, importantly, this is different from what you call molecular geometry because molecular geometry is the shape of the molecule, whereas electron geometry is the shape of the electrons around your central atom, whether they're lone pairs or bonds. So this is just electron geometry. I'll make another video on molecular geometry, which I'll link to below. So over the course of this video, we're going to link in, link in, that's not what I mean. I mean fill in this chart down below. And the very first molecule we're looking at has two regions. That means there's two regions of electron density around it. So those could be either lone pairs or bonds. If we look at the example molecule, it's BEH2. And this is about the most straightforward shape you could imagine for our electron geometry. We have some electron geometry out here, some electron geometry out there, and it makes a line. That one's pretty easy. Over here, I've drawn a line, and you can imagine that the molecule is drawn on each side of it. You might ask, why do I draw a line for this example? You probably already get the shape. Well, we're gonna keep going through more and more complicated shapes, and we're constantly gonna have a schematic on the right side here where we can add our atoms and think about what the shape is a little better. Not so hard with linear, but it'll be harder in a second. So that's two regions. Now, let's go to three regions. It's like distributing our molecule around a triangle. So we have our center atom there, and then we have an outer atom here, here, and here. And it's all in a plane. And so because of that, we call it trigonal planar. Planar meaning in a plane, trigonal meaning three. So our atom, our molecules are all in a plane distributed equally around a triangle. Now remember, right, if you draw a circle, 360 degrees. So you split that into three, and you get 120 degree bond angles. That's what that guy is there. So the, the angle between any two of our elect regions of electron density is about 120 for trigonal planar electron geometries. All right, what about when you got four regions? Now we start to get some more interesting shapes. Four regions is actually exactly like our methane that we showed at the beginning. So in the center of the shape, we'll draw a carbon. And then at each vertice, we have a hydrogen. So our bonds look like that. And it turns out that if you actually go measure what those bonds are, it gives you 109.5 degrees. That's the, sort of the most random bond angle that you'll see. It's always there for, uh, for molecules with four regions of electron density. We call that tetrahedral. Why tetrahedral? Well, you might recall that tetra means four. And if we look carefully at my shape over here, let me erase this stuff. If we look carefully at the shape, we have four sides on it. One, two, and then on the bottom, three and then on the back, four. So the reason it's called tetrahedral is in reference to the fact that if I make a shape where at each corner I draw a molecule, or an atom, I'm sorry, and my center atom's on the center, then there's four sides to it, and that's called tetrahedral. The reason I take so much time here explaining that is that that's the way the naming works for five and six also. So when you have five regions, you can imagine that my center atom is right here, and then once again I have an atom at each vertice, each point where those meet. 
And that means that I actually have two different bond angles. Around the center, it's just like trigonal planar, right? This is a triangle and there's atoms situated around it. And that means that the bond angle is 120 degrees. Let me erase all that. So my bond angle there is 120 degrees. My bond angle from the top to a corner down here, that one is 90 degrees, right? You can sort of imagine a right angle there. So two different bond angles for that shape if there's five molecules around it. Now, we call that one trigonal bipyramidal. Why is that? Well, we got trigonal, the triangle, and then notice that gives us a pyramid up top and a pyramid on the bottom. We got two pyramids around a triangle. Trigonal, bipyramidal. The names are a little obnoxious, but they make some sense. All right, last example is when we have six regions of electron density. Here, it's like a diamond, basically. And my central atom might be right here. And uh, then I'm going to have one, once again, at each vertice. Once again, we can think about the fact that this surface has eight sides. So the top half, maybe the easiest way to talk about this, is that the top half has four sides because it's a, like a four-sided pyramid. And the bottom half has four sides. It's also like a four-sided pyramid. So that gives us a total of eight sides. And so we call it an octahedral. Octahedral. And all the bond angles here are 90 degrees, whether you're going up, down, or left, right, because it's all around basically uh, this square shape in the center. So those are the four or five different shapes you need to know for electron geometries. Remember, this is describing where our electrons are, so where our bonds are or our lone pairs. All these examples here are filled in with atoms because it's easier to think about, but it would be the same for our electron geometry if, say, we replaced that hydrogen with just a lone pair. Then it would still be tetrahedral in terms of its electron geometry. So our electron geometry just describes the regions of electron density and the angles between them. What we're going to look at in the next video related to this is molecular geometry. And there what we're going to do is we're going to replace some of our atoms with lone pairs and we're going to look at what that does to the orientation of the atoms and give those names. So go ahead and check out the video on molecular geometry. It's linked to below. Thank you for watching this episode of Real Chemistry. Got any questions? Ask them below.